Hello traders, this is uh, Matt Zimberg. I'm from Optimus Futures. People also know me as Matt Z. I'd like to be your guide for the next 90 minutes or so discussing the micro e-mini futures. I'm going to cover the specifics of the micro contracts and also talk about trading futures markets in general. One thing I'd like to do is help you as much as I can through this presentation. So I thought about some things that might be good for those who are trading those contracts already and those who are beginners, beginners in trading in general or beginners in the futures arena. So I'm going to cover a number of things. I hope you'll have the patience to listen to the whole presentation. I think there's a lot of good points here. So again, be patient, don't skip. It takes a little bit of discipline to sit through all this, but I promise you it's worth your time. If you um, are watching this whole time, I think that you will have some questions. So those of you who uh, have pads, prepare your stencils. Those of you who still use notebooks, prepare your papers. And some of you are really young. That's the only thing you know. So take notes on that. So let's get started. Um, let me give you some details about our company where we are called Optimus Futures. We are a licensed independent introducing broker, which means we can trade through a number of clearing firms depending on customer needs. This is our website, OptimusFutures.com. These are our phone numbers underneath that you can take a look at. Um, we have our emails at support at optimistfutures.com. This is more for technical questions about our trading platform. Those of you who want to join us and might have some experience, if you are a beginner and you want to uh, open an account, or maybe you're a trader that trading futures and you want to have an additional account, we usually answer them at general at optimistfutures.com. And of course, we also have a community of traders that we support where you can go to community.optimistfutures.com and ask any question over there. Um, myself or our technical support will help you out with any question you have. And truly, you can ask any question. So let me tell you a little bit about the format. What I'm going to do, I'm going to talk a little bit about trading and then specifically talk about the micro contracts. There's a number of micro contracts out there. However, as I mentioned in the first slide or as you read in the first slide, we're going to focus on the stock indices that are offered by the CME. That's our focus today. And again, take notes and we'll answer all the questions you may have by those means or you can always call us uh, by email means or phone means. Let's get started. What I'd like to do before I am going to talk specifically about the micro markets and their specs, I'd like to talk about what it takes to be a trader. I thought I'll take the opportunity to share it with some of you who might be new to the markets who are very fascinated now in the marketplace. And what I mean by fascinated were covered day and night from news to forums to websites to social media that cover m covers markets events, but they don't really go into depth what it really takes to be a trader. So there's so many things out there that that make a trader and I can have a three hour presentation here and talk about it, but I wanted to emphasize five points which I think will help all of you, whether you're a beginner or whether you never traded before. So at least you'll have the opportunity, in my personal opinion, to walk into the market um, in the, with the right frame of mind, with the right foot. So let's get started. So what does it take to be a micro futures trader? Uh, first of all, you have to be a hard working person. What does that mean? It means that your trading is not done when you just finish trading. It means that you have to analyze what you did throughout the day and then you have to analyze what happened in the market and you have to prepare yourself for uh, the next day. 
So covering all those things is very important. Covering the things that you've done well, the things that you haven't done well. So the analysis of the market, they takes a long time and you always have to be observant of what's happening in the market and always have to be observant of what's happening in your own behavior when you trade the markets. And so again, you have to be a very hardworking person to be a successful trader. You have to be dedicated to attaining knowledge. What does that mean? It means that regardless of how long, um, regardless of how long you're trading in the marketplace, nobody can wake up in the morning and say, I know the markets. They always have an element of surprise. They always have a structure change. Yes, markets can only go up and down, but how they go up and down, that's the challenge. At what speed they fall and at what velocity they rise, that's the ongoing challenge, right? And, and how long they actually trade in ranges. So those things, this is where you always, like I said, have to be hardworking and always analyze and acquire knowledge from the right sources. I read all the time. I don't read all the nonsense out there. I have a, uh, basically m my favorite authors, my favorite blogs, um, anything out there that I consider to be a good source of information, knowing that what I read is also an opinion. It's not a fact, right? So I have to make the final decision. And obviously the responsibility always lies with you uh, as a trader to, to understand what you're reading and interpret it right and not just believe every word out there. But again, you, regardless of the length of time you've been in the marketplace, you always have to keep on attaining knowledge. I've been trading and I've been a licensed broker more than 20 years. And I would tell you, I'm not that arrogant to say that I know the markets. All I know is up until now, tomorrow is a new day. So, and that's the challenge. You also have to have the ability. And I think this is very important. You have to handle boredom. Trading is not there to entertain you. It's not trading is there for you to make money. And so you got to have the ability to follow a method. You have to have the ability uh, to be disciplined. Now, it does not mean that the first method you develop will be profitable, but it means that you always have to obey your method. If you start trading on a gut feel, randomly deciding things or getting fascinated because you read something somewhere or a friend told you to do something, that's exactly the opposite of boredom. You always have to do your due diligence. There will be times in the market where they don't present an opportunity. I think most of the time they don't. So again, you have to decide when you want to trade, how frequently you want to trade all to avoid again, uh, boredom. And so you don't do things randomly. All those things you can wrap up in a word that's called discipline, right? Now the discipline that traders need is above average discipline. This is not regular discipline. This is military style discipline. And you have to be very disciplined in doing all those three things above. Now, it's very hard to start trading if you did not develop discipline in any other area. M maybe you have a routine, for example, that you get up every morning and you work out. That's discipline. Those kind of things help you. If you haven't developed discipline in other areas, this is your time not only to develop discipline in trading, because I always believe that you bring your personal life into trading. Um, so develop the habits um, outside of trading that give you discipline and hopefully they'll spill into trading. The last point here, and again, this is not the only point, but I thought it's a very important point is to be realistic. Look, since I started trading, um, the world has changed. You're surrounded today with so much news and so much chatter. And I just see what's going on out there where people want to turn a small amount of money into very large amounts of money. And this is where sometimes they take their biggest risks. And this is not what you want to do. You want to be realistic. You want to grow yourself as a trader with knowledge. It takes time. It takes discipline. There will be mistakes along the way. You don't want to make very big mistakes. And so again, you want to be a realistic trader. This is a trade that would honestly, it will, will help you. 
Um, again, you know, what you want to do is exactly being the opposite of a gambler who just gets fascinated with things and doesn't have the patience to evolve. So again, I encourage you very much to be realistic about your own trading. Before we go into the mechanics of futures trading, uh, since I'm a licensed broker, I would like to um, tell you that trading futures um, entails a substantial risk of loss. You should trade only risk capital. Don't uh, put uh, money in futures trading with amounts that you cannot afford to take a risk with, okay? If you have a small account, it's fine. Trade with what you have, you know, so basically it would uh, help you out. I don't want to put you in a financial or anybody else should put you in some sort of a financial disadvantage. So I hope you had a chance to read this disclaimer here and part of it, understanding that, you know, stop, stop orders might not always get filled. We do not encourage uh, any type of methodology out there. You trade what's good for you and you uh, do the right thing for you. So please take into consideration also the futures trading is not suitable for everyone. So now we can get started. All right. So next thing is I uh, made a little slide here of how traders end up in futures. Okay. So I would like to cover that. So basically uh, people start uh, trading in a non-leveraged market and then they realize they can only make money on the upside and the markets is volatile it goes up and down so obviously you know they want to go into a market that can make money from the upside and the downside and since um some in day trading there's the pdt rule that you need twenty five thousand dollars um, a lot of traders will end up going to equity options so they can buy puts and they can buy calls. And basically they, when you buy a call is when you think a market is going up and when you buy a put, you think the market is going down, but essentially then they realize that choosing strike prices, having time expirations is adds further challenge to the idea of direction. So, it's one thing to choose direction, but how fast it's going to get there. And then you're fighting the time expiration. Then they discover, um, futures trading and, and luckily now you have the micro contracts, but that's how they end up in futures, futures trading. And again, I'm going to write, mention it a number of times. One of the advantages is you can go long, you can make money on the upside and the downside, and it takes the same level of margin or the same amount of margin. And we'll discuss margins. Okay. So just for now, just keep in mind that you, it has an advantage of making money on the upside and the downside. The difference again, between futures and stocks is that in stocks, you can get a leverage account. I think the maximum is one to four right now. Don't quote me on this. This is what I think it is. The leverage and futures is much more substantial. So obviously the way I look at trading, um, stocks can be also used as a source of an investment long term. You're participating in the company and so forth. For me, futures trading is not an investment. Futures trading for me is a purely a vehicle of, of, of trading because it's a leverage product. Okay. Um, let's discuss for a minute the, um, difference between all the markets out there and uh, and I, i'm going to present it in 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 a in an objective way you know i i don't put down other markets and i don't put down traders who use other assets because there obviously are a legitimate uh asset out there and some of them are very regulated let's just discuss that so uh micro futures versus forex well micro futures is a market where basically it trades on one exchange it's not a market that, that is um, where a market maker is generated in a bank or some sort of a broker that uh, gives you a bid and ask. It's a, an exchange. So everybody trades through the same venue, right? So you don't have one exchange that trades micro and mini S&P one way and another one a different way. And in, and in Forex, it does exist. So um, micro versus crypto. 
Again, micros are an exchange traded product. Crypto, you need a wallet. There's other security risks that are associated with uh, the crypto cash markets. I'm going to go into depth here, but you actually trading the actual physical crypto or the virtual crypto market. And again, you are trading it within the exchange that you are in. So every, every, everybody calls themselves an exchange, but there's a number of exchanges and the price differentials could be uh, different from one and another. They mostly follow the same, but there could be uh, differences. And micros, it's one exchange through the CME. Micros versus stocks. Again, micros are a vehicle that you can trade the upside of the market and the downside of the market. Stocks, a little bit difficult because you have also charges. If you short stocks, you have to pay interest. In micros or micro futures, you don't have that. Okay, let's discuss for a minute what moves the micro markets. So, one thing that moves the markets in general are fundamental news. It could be inflation figures, consumer price index, uh, price of crude oil, because obviously we travel, it affects transportation, logistics. There could be consumer confidence. There could be a lot of things that move the market. Now, when you analyze fundamental news, this is what you have to remember. News outlets, and I'm not going to mention you know the, the usual suspects out there on TV and in the news and uh, which websites I'm referring to, they always have to write something. Okay, they always have to justify if a market moved, why it moved. So the analysts on TV will always say, you know what, it moved. This is the reason. Sometimes they could be right, sometimes they could be wrong. It's just an opinion. And they have to attribute a move to something. But it doesn't mean that's why the market moved. Okay, so again, whatever you read out there, again, take it with a grain of salt. But remember that there's economic events that always affect us. It could be times that are inflationary, recessionary, expansionary. So that all affects the market. And it's important to know that. Technical levels. Clearly, in this day and age, technical levels, in my personal opinion, matter. So if you break the NASDAQ, for example, when it broke the 10,000 to, to the upside, that's significant. It does not mean that it will continue. It does not mean that you have to go long. But when it breaks and it stays above it, it could become a significant technical level. So uh, new 52-week highs, 52-week lows, um, growth in volume, and then the asset class, those things matter and they do affect traders. And because everybody looks at it, sometimes it's like a prophecy that fulfills itself. So it's important to understand that as well. Now, the reason that I actually made this specific slide, what moves the micro markets I wanted you to be aware of the surprise announcements. The surprise announcements, that's what, in, again, in my personal opinion, moves the markets the most, to the upside and the downside. And the reason is because the market didn't take it into consideration. And whenever the market doesn't take something into consideration, it shocks the market. And usually I'm referring to bad news that would take the market down. We always have a tendency, I feel, like buying things and going along when we think something is going down. So you have to be really careful when the market is going down to understand sometimes. And, and again, I'm not trying to make you a fundamental trader, but I think it's important to also know when there's big moves in the market, what causes it. Not just every single tiny move out there and make interpretation, but when there's big moves like we had with COVID, for example, it's a very volatile period. Obviously, you have to know what's going on in the world. So when you have announcements that uh, or um, news events that nobody took into consideration and it's coming out of the blue, companies that all of a sudden are in default or, you know, pandemics or anything of that nature, it could be geographical, geopolitical, uh, economical, anything that happens like that could really uh, surprise the markets. And obviously, as a trader, you want to be ready for it. So again, be aware of surprise announcements. Now, if you saw, I, I kept on saying that the market moves sometimes, you know, when there's fundamental news and everybody has to put a spin on it, why it moved. But just remember one thing, you know, 
there's daily interactions of of buyers and sellers sometimes you know funds would exchange stocks between them and it moves the market and it's just two big players who just did a transaction and nobody knows about it but at the same time it affected the market but again everybody could misinterpret as to why the market moved that way sometimes the market just moves because there's daily interactions of buyers and sellers there's also hedgers in the market there's also people who lift their hedge there's a lot of players in the marketplace with different purposes you have people who trade hft there's people who trade fundamentals there's people who basically do shifts in their portfolios there's a lot of things that are going on that affect the futures market so just keep that in mind and let's not get uh, melodramatic over every single move that that happens okay let me just move the slides along here okay getting closer here we're gonna start talking about the micros a little bit more so there's a bunch of micros that the cme has launched um i again because i don't have all the time in the world you know i, I can't discuss every single one of them but there's a large group right now you have the stock indices this is what i'm going to try and cover today you have the energy which is the micro crude the gold is micro gold there's micro fx fx futures so currency futures there's also treasuries that are micros and there's also micro bitcoins so those are the groups that are out there we are going to talk specifically about the stock index okay so the contracts that we are talking about are micro standard um sorry the micro standard and poor SP stock index futures you have the uh micro nasdaq micro dow jones and the micro russell let's get into the size of those things and before we go there just one thing you do not have to trade all four every single one of those contracts has its own volatility and its own behavior not to say that sometimes one can be vo more volatile than the other but you can choose to trade all four or two of them or just one it's absolutely fine okay so whatever you choose that it's right for you that fits your risk tolerance your risk capital your nature that's what's most important okay don't feel obligated that you have to uh, be a trader of everything especially um, you know there's a lot of people out there that say well I trade everything well it's it's hard to trade everything some people can but I think majority of people shouldn't so um, just to give you uh, okay, so let, let's talk here for a minute about uh, the micro S&P uh, futures. I'm sorry, I'm going to go back to the right one. I want to talk about the size. So you have the micro S&P. The symbol is uh, MES. It's trading uh, four different months, March, June, September, December. It's cash settled. And um, tick size is 0.25 which translates to $1.25 and the full point will be $5. I'm going to go a little bit into the um, other contracts. Sorry, not the other contracts, about the difference in uh, cash settlements versus physical uh, delivery, um, you know, in the next few slides. So for now, just bear with me and I'm going to explain how to trade the different months out there, how to move from one to the other because i know for some traders it's a challenge understanding all those months so no worries we will cover that okay this is a, a graph of uh, recently of the mes this is over our platform optimus flow it has a very modern interface you can do all kinds of graphical representations i specifically like this one it gives me kind of an overall look as how the market moves here and so this is just an example uh, of the micro ES. Um, let's go to the next one. Very interesting uh, one, which is, and a lot of traders like it because of its volatility. It's the NASDAQ. Symbol is MNQ. Again, trading four quarters, March, June, September, December. It's cash settled. Minimum tick is 0 0.25, which is 50 cents. And, the, and obviously a whole full point value one point in the micro would be two dollars which will be four ticks okay now i feel 
that I uh, skipped something here. I did. So I'm going to go back just for a minute. Okay. This is the slide that I uh, missed. So uh, what does every future contract have? Okay. Which is important. All right. So it has a settlement that could be cash or physical. Contracts such as gold and crude oil have a physical uh, settlement, which means they're actually due delivery. So you have to get out of them. The stock indices, luck luckily, you don't have to worry about delivery. They're all cash settled, but you have to basically get out of them and go to the next month. And, and we will cover that. Every single contract has a certain standard in the physical business. It's, for example, gold, it's 99.9% 99, 99 .9 gold. Oil, it's crude oil, has a certain quality associated with it. Every future contract is leveraged. There's a certain point value that is associated with it. As I discussed here, you should always trade the uh, near, nearby month and, and obviously move to the next month when the liquidity dries up. Every single contract has ticks and points, and every contract also has symbols. So I'm happy I found the slide and I came back to it. So now we can go to the other ones. Okay, so here we have, okay, so we had the uh, S&P, we had the NASDAQ, and now um, this is the Dow Jones contract, which is the MYM. That's the symbol again four months cash settled minimum tick is 1.05 and it's also the point in the tick is the same It's 0 0.5 dollars on every one point that it moves I took here a different time frame of the graph is from the other ones just to show you what happens when the market collapses And it's never pleasant and again could be surprise announcements You can find yourself long in this business or short if you're lucky but again, always exercise risk management. And the next one that we have here is the Micro Russell. Uh, this is the contract which I would probably say is the least liquid out of all of them. But people sometimes like it because the way it moves. It's called M2K. Same thing. March, June, September, and December. Cash settled and you have a minimum tick of $0.5. And the point value for one full point is $5.00. And um, this is actually, uh, again, the, another time frame that I chose for just to show you the volatility on it. Okay, so now we're going to go back to the slide. Which month should you be trading? So you always have to, to trade the nearby month which basically would be the most liquid one, but you have to move to the next month, okay? When the number of cartridges traded is becoming smaller and the next month is becoming bigger. Let me give you an example. Here's a snapshot from the CME. This is the September contract on the E-mini S&P. And you see the September traded at this point 25,000 and the December traded 58,000 in change. So obviously this is where you want to trade. Where the liquidity is bigger, it's easier to get in and out. As this market goes towards expiration, the number of contracts here will become smaller. This one will become bigger. And then as we approach expiration of December, March will become bigger. Now, very important thing to notice here that as you see this contract traded only 39 contracts so definitely not recommended as a trader to go into this market trade the liquid markets okay a lot of people sometimes take some some sort of a long-term position and they don't want to get out until the last minute with this contract and i'll tell you the more illiquid it becomes i would say the more surprises you will have with with, with price exploration as you exit so again go to the liquid contract on the platform it, in themselves there is volume also that you can pull out and look how much each month is traded and of course we are here to help again over time it will be um it will come automatically 
for you looking at those things okay um <coughs> excuse me going to um understand how we move from one month to another future contracts do not roll themselves over automatically right it's what you need to do is exit one month and go to the next month that's very important so again in the other example that i showed you you close out the september and you initiate the same transaction in december so for example if you are long september you have to sell it and then buy it again in december and that basically yes it would entail you know a new contract beginning and a transaction cost associated with closing and starting some people want to avoid it but staying in an illiquid market is not again in your benefit so look at the daily volume to gauge when to roll over as expiration is approaching okay let's go to uh, futures trading benefits uh, those of you again didn't trade before those of you who have bear with us you can go long and short the markets you can buy make money on the upside and also sell it and buy it back lower just with the margins and we'll discuss that there's no pattern day trading rule it doesn't mean that you have to have twenty five thousand dollars in their account nor are you restricted in the number of transactions that you do there's DEX benefits for futures in general, and obviously day traders. This is 60% long-term and 40% short-term. Clearly, anything that has to do with taxes, please go to your accountant. Um, some of them know this rule. Some of them don't. Enlighten them, you know, and make a decision with them. Accountants are very smart people. Um, the market is trading 24-5, which means five days a week with the exception of a one-hour close. Pretty much it's open all the time. You can trade the hours that it's appropriate for you. One thing that I always tell our traders at Optimus Futures, you do not have to be glued to the screen, right? Um, if you're a part-time trader and you just trading in the morning a few hours or a few hours in the afternoon, whenever time is available to you, that is absolutely fine. If you find that you experience some sort of a fatigue, just looking at the screen all day, not a problem find the time that is right for you even one hour a day it's absolutely fine there's no specific rule to tell you that you should trade um, a specific hour however you should pay attention to when the market is more active uh, versus not active and, and see if it's appropriate that hour is appropriate for you okay uh, <clears throat> so <coughs> um, things you must know about the micro futures so you should know what is the initial margin and what is the main maintenance margin. How do day trade day trading margins work? Where can I trade market future contracts and how much money I need to get started? So let's uh, cover those things. Okay. So again, if you never traded futures before, I'm going to take my time here and explain a number of things. There is a minimum amount that you must have in your account to initiate a transaction on a micro futures if you intend to keep the position overnight now overnight does not mean when you go to sleep which a lot of people think overnight means that the session for the day on the cme stops at five o'clock eastern it's four o'clock central three o'clock mountain time and two o'clock pacific that's when the session for the day stops then there's a one hour break and the next session starts and again it closes the next day so a lot of people do not understand this rule and don't understand the hours and futures so now you know if you intend to hold a position overnight you must start um, the position with enough money according to the exchange rules okay so let me give you an example and again this is just an example those are not specific numbers i just had to make it easy let's assume you want to trade one future contract in the micro overnight if the initial contract is a thousand dollars clearly you have enough to start 
by the time five o'clock rolls around, you must still have this $1,000. Now, if your maintenance margin, for example, uh, which also dictated by the exchange is 800, as long as the margin fluctuated between those two, you do not have to have more money in your account. However, if the market breaks below 800, which is the maintenance for that contract, you have to bring it up to 1,000. You do not um, have to, you, you, sorry, you do not bring it back to 800. You have to break it to, you have to bring it back to 1,000. So initial margins are dictated by the exchanges. Maintenance margins are dictated by the exchanges. However, day trading margins are dictated by the brokers. So let's discuss that. If you intend to hold a position only during the day, which means again, definition of day is by the exchange is up until five o'clock Eastern, four o'clock central, three o'clock mountain time, two o'clock Pacific. If you just want to trade until that time, then you can fall into the category of the day trading margins. Okay. Let's cover that for a minute. So day trading margin could be applied only during the day session and, and it could be applied during certain hours. So some brokers will say our day trading margins are from nine 30 in the morning until five o'clock. Some people say it's 24, uh, 24, five, or in reality, it's, it's 23, five. So even the next session, you can start again, it's considered day. So you really should find out what are the hours that the brokers allow you to do that. Um, cause even within a, a certain day trading session, they can limit it only to a certain number of hours. So again, find out, um, this, these margins are dictated by the exchanges. Okay. One question that we always get asked is, do I need to put the day trading margin and the initial margin together? And the answer is no, you do not. If you have enough for day trading margins, that is sufficient. Okay. And as long, again, as long as you exit before the, the day session and it's, and I want to emphasize, it's not the, it's not the broker's responsibility to take you out. It's your responsibility to get out. You are under, are under the margin rule. So, uh, please understand that. Um, so again, if you exit before it's fine. Are there maintenance margins in day trading? No, but a broker may decide that if you exceeded a certain loss in your account, you should get out or you're at the risk of the broker liquidating you as well. So again, rules of day trading margins are dictated by the, by the brokers. One thing I wanted to tell the new traders out there that seek leverage upon leverage. Let me explain that. So typically new traders always ask what kind of day trading margin can you give me? Which is really another question of how much leverage can I get? If I put X amount of dollars, how many contracts can I have? Now, if you're an experienced trader and you're able in, to carry a large number of contracts over a small amount of capital, you know, it's again, it's your decision. If you're a new trader building risk leverage upon leverage, even for advanced traders, there's a higher level of risk and reward. So again, if you trade one future contract, for example, on a thousand dollars, one micro on a thousand dollars, there's a certain leverage that you take on yourself. So now you have the contract size, whatever the index point, um, whatever point it is multiplied by the point value of the contract that that is the, um, value of the contract. So let's say, um, if the m micro S and P and again, I'm just using figures here, right? If the micros are trading at five dollars uh, a point then the market is at four thousand let's assume again just round bigger the market value of the contracts is twenty thousand dollars and you can and you trade it on a thousand now that's quite a lot for a thousand right but some people say well i want three contracts now you're trading sixty thousand on a thousand so essentially you're increasing the risk and the reward and it's very important for beginner traders to understand 
that if, if you start with that kind of a behavior from day one, um, first of all, it, it, it's, it's very hard to go back in, in terms of behavior to, to trading, uh, for a lack of a better word, in a normal way, in a smaller size, because now you tasted leverage. So again, I would encourage all beginner traders to just start with one contract, see how it goes, and you can always progress and add it later as you gain more experience. And the good thing about all of this is that at some point you will see where your psychology breaks. What does that mean? You will understand where I would say, where does it affect you more than any other, um, where the number of contracts affect you in a way that it just weighs on you psychologically, what it affects your decision making, right? And everybody has that point. So again, starting slow would work. I hope that, you know, that, that um, the margins here, um, you were able to understand how it works. And again, the key to remember is day trading margins could be dictated by the, your broker and, its ter and his or her terms. And obviously anything which is um, from one session to the next is dictated by the uh, CME, Chicago Mercantile Exchange. Okay, let's go to the next things here. Okay. Okay, so can you trade? Um, oh, I'm sorry, I just lost here. All right, so can you trade futures through a stock account? So no, you need a futures trading account if you are in the United States. Uh, you want to make sure that your broker is a member of the NFA and registered with the CFTC. If you're outside the United States, you want to make sure that we, sorry, that we do take, I, I meant to say we do take customers from outside the United States, um, from different countries. We can't take all the countries, but we take majority of countries. Uh, but if you decide to trade in your own country, just make sure that you, your broker is registered within your regulatory body and every modern country out there has you know uh, a regulatory body those of you who are uh, living in bigger countries they have mature regulatory bodies some smaller countries unfortunately have you know um, regulatory bodies that you know are a little bit more flexible with their rules let's say so i would suggest to go to somebody with um, if you can neighboring country that has a mature um, regulatory body that knows how to supervise behavior of brokers. All right. So going to the next, what exchange offer the micro futures market? So only the CME, basically only the CME offers those things. They have exclusivity on them. And that's the only place that you can trade it. It's a, the Chicago mercantile exchange. And by the way, over the years, a lot of people are trying to compete with them with different contracts. It's difficult to say the least. They have really good technology, and so um, and in and, and it's for the most part stable exchange. Um, it doesn't mean that there won't be any technical glitches with platforms or data feeds or sometimes the exchange. Obviously, those are components. So every component out there at times has issues, but for the most part, it's a very advanced and capitalized exchange. Um, now there are there are other foreign micro contracts that I traded on different exchanges out there. However, as I mentioned before, if you want to trade the S&P, NASDAQ, Dow Jones and Russell, which is really the big indices that everybody follows worldwide, you have to go through Chicago Mercantile Exchange. That's where all the transactions occur. By the way, we send all the transactions to the exchange. A lot of people think that, you know, brokers sometimes and maybe some do, you know, intercept orders or anything like that. We send everything directly to the exchange to our uh, data providers who check for risk and and then and they also execute. And many executions happen within milliseconds, which is obviously time de of delivery of your execution is very crucial. Um, does data cost money? Yes, the CME does charge for those four indices it's ten dollars a month i know there's a lot of assets out there that you don't get charged for data but in this specific case the cme charges ten dollars and again there's a lot of people who use this data it's an exchange that used worldwide by all the traders out there 
You know, it's the most liquid, ex one of the most liquid exchanges in the world. And obviously to sustain and maintain all this infrastructure, it cost uh, $10. However, the $10 is for level two data, which means if you have a dome, you have all the, bid, all the, all the bids and offers uh, displayed on the um, dome. If you don't need it and you're just trading from the chart, you can ask for something that's called level one or top of book and you just pay one dollar a month so if that's all you want you can ask your broker and say hey listen i don't need all that fancy stuff just put me on that now not all data feeds provide uh top of book some of them only have level two and you have to pay the ten dollars but many of our providers if you need will you you can end up with top of book so this is something just to keep in mind because obviously I want to save you some money as well. Um, what do you need to know? So after you open a futures account, what are all the things <coughs> that are important for you to know? One is to know the symbols. You have to know the orders. You have to know the platform, the data feed. Let me just explain a little bit and then we go into the individual slides. I hope I still have you. I'm still maintaining my enthusiasm. So you know i hope you're here with me um if you need a coffee it's fine put me on pause go get a coffee you know and and come back but don't skip okay you promised so you have the symbols you have to know the symbols for every single contract that you're trading and you have to know the month right so it's very easy in the futures business so this if you're trading march it's h june is m September is U, December is Z. Okay, now um, let me give you an example. Let's say you have you're trading the micro ES. It would the symbol would be M E S, and let's say the month is December, so it's Z, and then the number is twenty one. Now different data providers would might want it in a different figure. So some of them would say M E S Z twenty twenty one. Some of them might say M E S Z 21. So again, depending on the data provider you're working with, they'll tell you what, they what, what you're trading. Uh, and it's really easy. And again, if you're trading with us, you know, we're, we're, we can even set it up for you. Okay. So you have to know the contract that you're trading and the month and obviously the right year. You don't want to put by mistake Z 22, which will end up being a very illiquid market and nobody trades it. And you don't want to be stuck in a market like that because it's hard to get out. You have to know orders, order types. Some people know how to just buy and sell. It's fine. But as a future trader, you have to know all the order types that are out there. And we're going to go into them the next slide because it's going to give you the ability to capitalize on as many opinions as you develop okay just keep that in mind the more orders you know the more ways you will have to capitalize on certain things okay you need a trading platform of course we have a trading platform we'll provide it for you uh, we have a great great trading platform in in my opinion modern um, and we have our own uh, our own white label product that uh, we provide we also you also need a data feed you need to connect to a data feed now some people take it for granted but not all data feeds are the same some of you know if you have glitches in your trading platform it's because the data feed is just not good or not connected well or wasn't programmed well so to have a stable data feed don't take it for granted that's very important to have stability one of the number one thing about a platform first get it stable that's important. I know everybody wants to get the lowest commissions out there. I get it. But if you have a, 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 the cheapest commissions in the world, but you have a platform that is not functioning and, and, and it's slow, then it will cost you a lot more money. So again, focus on the stability platform, test it out, paper trade it, see how it works. In case things don't go well for you, always know your technical desk. Okay. Always know, always call. Unfortunately, there are times in the markets that it's such panic that everybody calls in and, you need, and we need some patience and everybody thinks they're the only customer out there, which is understandable. It's money. But nevertheless, we're here to help you and as fast as we can. 
So here's so always have a support desk. I'm sure if you work with a broker and you just know the platform and just email communication, know also the 24 hour desk where you can call, where you can discuss with your broker or at least say hello. So he knows you know him and they know you. You'll be surprised, but you know, there's some customers. We have many, many customers and I mean many. But nevertheless, you know, when some people call, I recognize them and I know them. So it's good to build uh, a, a, a rapport. Um, I know that the relationships between brokers and, and customers, first and foremost, it's business, it's tr transactional. But we try to help everybody, remembering that everybody worked really hard for their money. So here are some of the orders that you should <coughs> keep in mind, right? And again, you know, maybe one day I'll do a video about all the orders out there, but you have a market order. If you need to get in and out immediately, you have a limit order, which if you have patience, put that, that's the price you want to get in. You have a stop order, which means it's a market. Stop orders can be orders to get into the market or if you want to be out of the market, if you're already in them. So for example, if you think the market breaks up, should break a certain level on the upside, you can have a buy stop and only when it breaks, you go long. Again, as you saw the warning in the slide that was there in the early stages, stop orders, sometimes, you know, they can be skipped. Sometimes they don't get executed or sometimes they have big slippage on them, depending on the market condition at the time. You have market of touched orders, limit of touch, not going to get into it, but here's an order here, trailing stop. So basically you got to know if you, for example, Let's use a position where you're short, right? When you take advantage of the market going down and it's going down and you have a stop loss, well, you want to do is trail the market with it. So knowing and understanding how all those orders works, it's important. Um, you go long, you know, obviously you buy, you go short, you sell, you have limit orders, stop orders. You can have multiple targets. So if, for example, you're trading the market, and, you know, let's say you're trading three micros and you have three different levels to get out. It's possible. You can do that, right? You can have one stop loss, but three different targets to get out. Um, OCO, one cancels other, right? So you're in the market. You say, well, if target hits and hopefully your profitable target, then you want to cancel all the other orders that are working with it. So uh, again, understanding the orders functionality in the platform is very important. I would say that over the years, I saw a lot of people making mistakes because they did not take the time to do that. Now we have enhanced orders in it. So, uh, for example, we had an, uh, somebody that came to us and said, look, I want to know if I'm in the market more than 30 seconds because I'm a short term trader. Sure. You know, so we enabled. Uh, a functionality uh, with our programmers where they helped us program where the market, the trader could be warned that he's now in 30 seconds and he wants to get out. So the more time you take to know the order ex execution on your platform, the uh, better it is. Now, this is something a little bit, I'm going to deviate just for a minute. You know, a lot of <clears throat> new traders focus on indicators they think that there's some sort of a magical indicator and signal out there and um, that would tell them but they skip order execution and i think this is the one thing they should focus more on um you know understanding how orders are getting executed in the marketplace the limitations of those orders and that would give them a lot of flexible ways to um establish um their position in the market in a better way Okay, we'll go to the next slide. Okay, so we covered this, I think. We covered the platform that you need. You need data feed and everything else. Okay, so now, so how to prepare to be, uh, um, be a futures micro trader, right? You might decide that you want specifically to focus on the micro contracts. Now, there's nothing wrong with staying in within the micro world and trading just micros. If, because back in the day, you couldn't trade micros. There was only large contracts. So it means whether you were a hedger, professional trader, or a retail trader, you always traded the same thing. You always traded 
the same contract as the professionals where they have a lot more money. You might not be as well capitalized as they are because sometimes they're institutions and you're an individual. So there's nothing wrong in deciding to be just a micro futures trader and just staying within this realm of trading. Okay. So here's what you will need. And again, you obviously understand, I hope you, you do understand that I cannot cover everything, but I try to cover the most fundamental things that I think are very important. So you have to decide on your trading capital, on your trading platform, on your method, on your daily routine, on your tracking and finding your edge. I'm going to go through all of them because they're very important. Okay. So what you want to do is first of all, decide of how much money you're looking to risk. The amount of money that you're going to risk will have a very strong psychological impact on the way you make decisions. Write this down and I'm going to say it again. The amount of money that you're trading will have a psychological impact on how you're making decisions. If you're trading with capital, which is not risk capital, and you are taking way too many risks, even on the risk capital, as I, as I mentioned here, what leverage are you looking for? Which means even within your risk capital, you can trade certain number of contracts because of day trading margins. Again, decide your risk capital, decide how much this, nobody's chasing you. You know, I always tell my, you know, my customers that the approach we always took at Optimus Futures is let traders do what they want. Nobody is there to pressure you to do anything. You know, some of you will trade a lot. Some of you will not. And we understand and respect it because you're all individuals, right? So it boils down to some sort of a, a little bit of kind of mutual respect and, and knowing that the customer is always right. And part of it is your right to trade the way you want to. However, I feel that there's always some sort of an external pressure on traders today to take the highest leverage, to achieve results as fast as possible. And remember, when you develop trading skills, you, you want to be a trader for the next, not year, five years, 10 years, you should have a 20 year horizon, right? That's the way you should look at, at trading, especially if you're young or even if you're not, right? You want to do it long term. So this would help you. Okay. So we covered that. We said trading platform. Okay. Um, okay. So our recommended trading platform, Optimus Flow, first of all, it's free. It has all the functionalities that both futures traders that are amateurs and both pros need. Now, let me tell you this, and this is one big misconception. You know, the best traders that I've met in this industry don't have 10 screens. There's some sort of a, a misconception out there that as the trader evolves, he has more equipment, more computers, uh, more screens. I'm going to tell you, even the pros can use very basic methods and their strength is in the risk management. That's their strength. That's what trading is about. It's about not only initiating the trade, it's how they behave after the trade is knowing how to cut their losses short. They have the ability to recover fast psychologically if they didn't have a good day. So there's just a lot of things out there. So this platform Optimus flow has everything you need and Again, I'll give you the slide in the end so you can uh, ask us for it. It's free. It has order flow. It all has all the order types and enhanced orders, um, orders as I mentioned before. All right. Um, let me see. Let's go back here. Um, what method are you going to trade? Okay. So you have to decide on the method that you're trading. It doesn't have to be a sophisticated method, but here's the key. The key is to avoid random decisions. This is what you want to do. You want to avoid random decisions out there because if you make random decisions, basically you will run out of capital really, really fast. So developing a method is extremely important. Okay. So some method you can rely on simple technical analysis where basically it's support resistance, RSI, MACDs, you know, uh, Fibonacci, GAN fans, all those, uh, Again, and waves and whatever you decide that, that is good for you. Okay. But whatever you use, I think more important than the method is really the risk management that's attached to the method, knowing when to take the position off order flow. This is where uh, traders love to make analysis of how much volume is traded at certain levels. 
So they like to analyze that. There is some validity to it. So decide if it's for you. If you're math oriented, quantitative analysis is fine. Uh, programming API, you know, that's the one thing um, that's important. And of course, every method, you have to focus on your exit. One thing I will tell you about every single method out there, that there are people out there that are constantly in the state of paper trading or they're never ready to trade because they think they will perfect their system. They're just in the business of staring at the screen for hours and days. And look, if you have all this time to spare, all right, and this is what you want to do, it's fine. But I'm going to tell you this, okay? At some point, you have to put your method to practice. I'm not telling you when to do it, but sitting on it for years and perfecting it and saying, I'm only going to enter when my system is perfect. Let me tell you, it's never going to work. You're always going to be hesitant. And the real study of your method starts with real capital, not on a paper trading account. So keep that in mind. That's, and I feel very strongly about that. And I've told a number of people out there, especially people who are programming and using sophisticated models, they always try to tweak and make it perfect and look at the hours and this. I think it's coming from a place that they're afraid to trade, which is fine. I'm not here to judge anyone, but at least I'm trying to always tell them what prevents them and perfecting a method. It's just never going to happen because sooner or later, even as a trader, you, because of market conditions, you'll have to adjust things. So again, it's an ongoing being a trader. It's always a process of evolving, um, with the markets. All right. So this is it. All right. Routine. Okay. Let me see here. So we spoke about the method. Now we're in the routine part. Okay. So what you want to do, okay. Is decide on your routine. What are your hours of trading? So the hours that you trade will be the one that you're flexible and are appropriate for you. <coughs> you might be from overseas. You might trade the night session again. It's when after the five o'clock and then six o'clock starts in Eastern time, you might trade that session because you're in a different part of the world, but whatever time you trade, just make sure that there's movements out there. Usually during the day, that's when it's considered more liquid. However, there are times that night, for example, what we went through when, you know, during COVID of 2020 in the early part, the markets were so volatile and it was, you know, during the day and during the night. Right. So again, decide on your hours, then decide how frequently you want to trade, right? Trade with your temperament, trade with a decision making that you're comfortable with. If you're feeling comfortable making a decision every five minutes, it's fine. You can trade with five minute charts then. However, if you are not keen on trading that combine it with a 20 minute chart. So look at five minutes, look at 20 minutes again, nobody's rushing you. So the hours of the day, and then how frequently you want to trade. I believe that every single person because of our name, because we all have different nature. So the question is how many decisions you want to take per time frame, right? Something to consider, consider the instrument that you're going to trade. We discussed that. You can trade all four contracts with just one of them. Some people again, trade all four. Some of them do one, some of them do two. Again, it's up to you. Let's discuss a little bit of other habits, which might impact your trading. It's eating, sleeping, your diet and your mental awareness. Look, um, if you eat heavy foods before trading, you'll get very tired. If you don't have enough sleep and you're stressed, it's not the best to trade. What you want to do is be very coherent when you trade and be focused and maintain your energy. Kind of like me trying to maintain this energy after one hour of PowerPoint, but I hope you're still with me then obviously. So diet is important. And you know, the one thing that I wanted to tell you is obviously mental awareness and mental awareness means being very conscious of your actions on the day to day and especially what you do in trading. So one of the things that I like to do, I'm people know that about me. I like to read a lot. I like to read books about decision-making. It, it just kind of sharpens my, um, 
mental awareness. I take it from different, uh, from different aspects of life. I might read a management book or I might read even a science book, but in the end it somehow relates to decision-making that helps me keep my mental awareness out there. So I think it's important when you trade, not only to focus only on markets, but habits outside of it would, would help you substantially. Okay. So, um, one of the things, let's see, what did we cover here? So we did daily routine. Now we're going to talk about tracking. Okay. So tracking. So here's the thing. <coughs> I want to talk to you for a minute about the concept of intuition. Okay. A lot of traders out there do not track their performance. And they think that just based on their intuition, they can pick what they're doing right and what they're doing wrong. And I'm going to tell you something. If that's the method you use, your intuition, you're off. If you have a notebook and you took some notes and you observe it, it helps. If you have an Excel spreadsheet, even better. If you have a trading journal, even better. So here at Optimus Futures, I wanted to tell you that we have a trading journal here that um, that works along with our platform Optimus Flow. At the end of the day, you just click a button, you move all the trades, and you're able to see what you did right or wrong. Now, we will add more and more things over time to this. So it will give you the ability uh, to measure more things so you can make decisions. You might find out that um, you trade better on Mondays than Fridays. You may find out that you trade better between two o'clock and four o'clock. Now you can do this just based on a week analysis over long periods of time in many transactions, you will start gathering the data and it will give you a really good picture of what you're doing right now. One of the things that is really most important here is your niche, right? Let me see. Did I talk about it? Okay. In the next, okay. It's in the next slide. So here's the thing, your niche or your edge is within your trading. This is what it helps you find out. Okay. So now we're going to go into the edge. Okay. And what it is now, let me just explain something about edge. A lot of people think that they have some sort of a secret you know, or they think they will find a secret or some people try to sell you a secret as to their forward looking ability into the market. Okay. So excuse me, but it's two letters. And the reason is, is because there is no forward looking mechanism out there. I know we'd like to believe that there is, but there really isn't. So finding your edge means finding what you do right within your trading and removing all the wrong parts. And, and this is a refining process. This is not just, Oh, I found out and that's it. You will always keep on refining it. Right. But at least there's something that you measure and you take a look at and it helps you hopefully improve your performance. And it's in every brokers, just like mine, best interest that their customers actually do dedicate time. So we, we tried to, to improving their trading and they become good traders and there's a long-term relationship. It, I think that's what everybody should strive for. But at the same time, I believe that you should be given those tools to give you a platform. Okay. But now after so many years in the business, like, okay, I got to give a little bit more and here's the platform. So let's talk about your edge for a minute. Okay. So here it is finding your edge. Okay. And your edge is this not again, it's inside the numbers that you analyze. So again, looking at things like the day, the hours, the risks that you take, if there could be times that you can look at risks and say, you know what, the risks that I take are way too big. The setup that I'm using under that. And by the way, we, we give you the ability to write notes. So every transaction you can write note and say, this is what I did with this setup, that setup. Now you're starting to be observant and say, you know what? Every time I do this setup, I lose money. But every time I make this setup, it makes me money. So again, now you have two methods. So you eliminate one of them, right? I mean, easy. It's easy. But 
The hard part is really waiting enough time to make sure because in one given week, let's say that the losing, you have a method that lost money, but the method that lost money over one week could make money over a year over the other method. So again, it's important to have enough numbers out there to justify a decision. And again, it's your, I, I, I don't know how many numbers it would take for you, but it, it has to be reasonable. You have to be kind of reasonable when, when, when it comes to gathering data. You also want to decide on the uh, instrument that you trade. You might trade micro E-mini and micro NASDAQ. And after again, a large number of transactions, you decided the NASDAQ is better for you and it's fine. Or you might find out that the Russell is better for you, which is fine too. All right. So you also measure the risk and the reward that you're after. Maybe, you know, it's just not, you have some sort of a, something that's not balanced out there between risk and reward. So you want to make sure that it's working. And above all, you know, you want to look at the losses that you take on one at what transactions, what setups, what market conditions, what hours, what days. Again, those are the things that would help you out in the trading business. Um, I think we're just coming here to an end. I'm just going to make sure that I covered uh, uh, all the information that I need to give you here. And we covered all the slides. We did. Okay. So we came to the end. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, I know that I couldn't cover everything, but I tried to cover as much as I could. I'm going to give you this number again. This is our number here. It's 800-771-6748. We have the support. Obviously, we have the general questions. We have community.optimistfutures.com. I'm at Z. I really enjoyed it. So on a personal note, I wanted to thank you for sitting through all of this, taking the notes, taking the time to learn the markets. And I wish you nothing but the best in your trading and in your personal life. So thank you. One last reminder, futures trading, the substantial risk of loss in futures trading, Please trade only risk capital. Decide if futures trading in for you. And remember, past performance is not indicative of future results. Thank you and have an awesome day.